I welcome you all in online refresher course in chemistry hosted by Department of Chemistry Gujarat University Ahmedabad on behalf of Dr Jagdish Joshi Professor Director UGC HRDC and Dr Dilip Vasawa Assistant Professor Refresher Course Coordinator Department of Chemistry Gujarat University I am Nikita Mishra from Department of Chemistry Gujarat University welcome you all in the session of Dr Navid Malik fellow of Royal Society of Chemistry associate professor Department of Chemistry SVNIT Surat Dr Malik completed his graduation in chemistry from JP Arts and Science College Baruch and post graduation in analytical chemistry as a major subject from Department of Chemistry South Gujarat University Surat he has been awarded as a PhD in 2007 by south gujarat university surat he joined sardar vallabhbhai national institute of technology svnit surat in 2008 as a assistant professor in chemistry he has worked as a post doctoral fellow at university of sao paulo brazil from november 2014 to october 2015 He has more than 17 years of research experience and 11 years of teaching experience. He is co-author of four book chapters and 82 research papers in journals of various national and international repute, and has more than 1 to 1 six citation with H index of 21 and I10 index of 45. In his research interest the thrust area includes designing novel surfactants with ionic liquid characteristics their aggregation behavior in various external environments sol gel in ionic liquids ion gels and their applications in materials chemical thermodynamics and solution chemistry of pure and multi component liquid mixtures including ionic liquids and deputectic solvents carbohydrate chemistry including cellulose chemistry He has supervised many research projects as Quest Fellowship for Research and Advanced Training in 2021, UGC CSR Collaborative Research Project, Award of Beam Time by Australian Centre of Neuron Scattering in 2017, Department of Science and Technology DST New Delhi, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research CSIR New Delhi. In his professional awards, he received a fellowship 2021. Fellowship of Royal Society of Chemistry in 2021 Twice Case Visiting Expert Fellowship in 2010 DST Young Scientist Award in 2015 Post Doctoral Fellowship from State Sao Paulo Brazil He is also a member of scientific societies like member of American Chemical Society member of Royal Society of Chemistry UK member of American Oil Chemist Society member of Indian Council of Chemists fellow member of indian thermodynamic society he is also a reviewer for various projects in department of science and technology dst government of india science and engineering research board serve government of india australian nuclear science and technology organization national science center poland and as a reviewer in various national and international journals with high impact factor thank you Good morning to everyone. Welcome to the second online uh, refresher course in chemistry organized by Gujarat University uh, through HRDC. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Navid I Malik, uh, working as an associate professor in the uh, Department of Chemistry, uh, Sardar Vallabh Bhai National Institute of Technology, Surat, which is an uh, institute of national importance. Uh, government of india uh, i thank uh, ugc human resources development center hrdc of gujarat university for giving me an opportunity to conduct uh, to connect with you and deliver my session on chromatography i thank dr jagdish joshi professor and director of ugc hrdc and course coordinator dr dilip basawa department of chemistry gujarat university for the opportunity to share my knowledge on this particular platform HRDC Gujarat University is ranked as 15 in all over India and number 1 in Gujarat it is pioneer and created history on our benchmarks by organizing the first of its kind online refresher course in India in the year of 
in which around 2500 participants have attended it's a big number you know actually 2500 participants actually it's a really really big number and really congratulate hrdc gujarat university and the coordinators actually for their success uh, for that uh, even uh, hrdc gu is the uh, organized the first online professional development program for the administrative staff of universities which is really a tough task actually during the lockdown with 105 participants actually it's really an admirable uh, attempt by the particular hrdc uh, hrdc gu or the gujarat university is coordinating the online e-content creation training for all the professors of the colleges and universities of gujarat along with department of higher education commissionerate of higher education and knowledge consortium of gujarat in 2020 UGC HRD Gujarat University was funded by MHRD under ROSA grant of 3.33 crores. It is one of the very few HRDCs which have very fruitfully and successfully organized the programs under its umbrella. It has collaborated with IIM, Ahmedabad, SPIPA, IIT Delhi and Mumbai JNU, Delhi University and many other universities actually for the development of the particular professors as well as the faculty members in all over the Gujarat as well as outside the Gujarat. The Lal Bahadur Sastri National Academy of Administration, Masuri, Mumbai University, Narsimhan Institute of Management, Inflibate, SNDT Mumbai University, San Xavier's College Mumbai, Nippon, NCRT, and UGC are the other uh, institutes where HRDC Gujarat University has collaborated. It invites international resource persons. It has MOU with UK and Canadian University. This tells you about the particular about the uh, HRDC Center of Gujarat University. Uh, so HRDC Center uh, Gujarat University is uh, doing really, really a great work actually for the uh, upliftment of the particular faculty members of different colleges as well as the institutes. I really congratulate them actually for their uh, these efforts and i hope they will continue in coming future so the, let us start uh, the, what we are going to see in this particular talk so i hope that uh, my uh, let me share my screen I hope it's visible to you. So we, uh, in this particular talk, are going to see the chromatography, and in particular, in chromatography, we are going to see high-performance liquid chromatography. Myself, as I just introduced myself, Dr. Navid Malik, associate professor working at Department of Chemistry, as well as Institute of Technology, uh, recently awarded the FRSC. We are based in Gujarat. We all people in Gujarat. Uh, we are. I'm based at Surat. Uh, my institute uh, name is uh, Surat, uh, itself known as a diamond city, silk city, the city of sun, and it's the fastest growing city. You are having some visuals from the uh, city, uh, starting from the Gaurav Path to this uh, Gopi Garden, and this is our SMC building, different roads, and if you see the infrastructure wise, you'll see that, okay, Surat is the city of the bridges one of another name for the Surat city and in also known as SVNIT or NIT Surat it establishes in 1961 as the regional engineering colleges all over the India and in 2002 the government changed uh, all RECs to the NITs actually and uh, in uh, 2007 uh, SVNIT was uh, ranked upon means uh, 54 in NIR ranking all over India actually and uh, we are running six undergraduate courses 18 PG courses now there are so many PG courses I can tell you actually that so many so many PG, uh, PG courses we have started along with the three MS integrated courses we are coming with a basket kind of the courses where the student can pick up different courses based upon their own interest so the, the we are uh, in line with the particular uh, recent developments uh, in R&D sector in uh, uh, research as well as the industry. 
uh, academia and institute, uh, industry both we are going to. So let us start, uh, you might have seen in this 2018-1920 actually the word that scared so many people, COVID-19 or coronavirus. You might have observed these kind of things actually that whenever you are driving on a road and suddenly actually you'll see that some check posts are there and on that check post you are to be undergone the test, which is the COVID test. Very, very, very important, very important. You can see the whole world is facing the problem due to COVID-19. So why we are discussing uh, this at this point of time? Let us go ahead and see actually what, why we are discussing and what we are going to discuss in this particular talk. So during that particular period, right now also, we might have observed the rapid antigen test. And this kind of kit was there. A uh, uh, guy, a particular uh, health professor, must have inserted something in your uh, nose and uh, taken that particular sample and put it on a particular rapid antigen test uh, and just tell you whether you are positive or negative. So based upon the particular results, they'll uh, advise you, they must have advised you that, uh, okay, you have to be quarantined, you have to go for the further testing or you are free actually, you are negative. One more thing which you can see that this is the biggest weapon in the COVID-19 and 95 mask. Why we are discussing over here? Let us keep a suspense over here. We will come that why we are discussing this COVID-19 and N95 mask as well as the antigen test. Similarly, the most beautiful experience for any women after getting married, just first one they must have observed that whether they are pregnant or not. And now a home kit are available. That a first urine drop of the day. Just check it out and whether a good news is there or not, you can do it at home. Very simple. Just put a drop of the first urine sample and then you will be having the news. Whether you are positive means you are pregnant or not. Very simple test. Very, very simple test. Why we are discussing? Let us make uh, it a little bit suspense. We'll come to the point. You must have observed whenever you are driving this, whether you are drunk or not. My personal advice, please don't mix drinking and driving. It will really, really, really bad habit. So you must have observed this, that a traffic police will come to you, will check your, uh, to your mouth, and will ask you to inhale, exhale, and will tell whether you have to go or you have to pay the fine or they'll advise accordingly to your particular, uh, whatever the situation is that. One more thing is there, why several doctors, when you are visiting the medical professionals, they will prescribe specific company medicine. They will say, hey, you have to take a particular medicine from a particular store. And after purchasing, please show me the particular drug which you have taken. Why? Many times this question is literally disturbing us. Why this particular guy is asking? But there are certain reasons for that. There are certain reasons because like a generic medicines, many companies are uh, synthesizing, they are producing the same drug, but the same drug is not giving the same results with the different companies. Why? Whether quality matters? Yes, obviously quality matters. How? Means how the quality matters? Definitely, if you are having, let us say actually that you are having uh, diabetes, metformin is the most important drug and metformin is the only drug we can say actually, which is a standard drug. Many doctors are prescribing from the X, Y, Z and company. But certain companies are giving the best results. The reason that their quality is the best one. That's the reason actually they are prescribing. Why? I just say the reason actually, that the quality matters. How they are going to check? So in industry, in the pharmaceutical industry, there is a particular session or section is there actually, which has been called as the quality control laboratory. In the quality control laboratory, the scientists, they first check whether the particular drug is having an impurity or not. And if the impurity is there actually, then how much is the impurity provided? 
So they are checking the particular impurity profile with different method. And one of the most important method is what we are going to discuss today. You must have seen these things in your uh, kitchen. These are the seals. Every day after getting up, we used to have a cup of tea. And that makes our day. So that cup of tea, that tea is going to be sealed with the help of these seals. So, what are common in all these? These are the seals, these are the medicines, uh, drink and drive. Oh, well, you are, you are pregnant or not? A 95 mask and rapid antigen test. There are so many examples. What connected these all things? And the word will come actually. Everything is connected by the word chromatography which is our topic of interest for today. So we are going to see chromatography. We are going to discuss the chromatography in this particular talk. So what is chromatography? Chromatography, it comes from the Greek word chromos, means color. Graphene means writing. It is the technique for the separation of mixture. Initially, it started for the separation of the colors. And that's the reason, actually, from ancient time, the word came actually chromatography. That separation based upon the color nowadays you can separate it through different 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 kind of criteria we will come to know actually which criteria we are going to use for them so passing a mixture or analyte through a stationary phase which separates it from other molecules in the mixture and it allowed them to be get separated or isolated that is mean by chromatography so chromatography means distribute the sample components between a stationary phase and a particular moving phase. Stationary phase will be called as a stationary phase. It is remaining stationary. Moving phase is not nothing but a mobile phase. So many, through many shops and shops and steps, actually, we'll come to much today. I'll show you a particular figure in which we'll show that how the shops and shops and shops and shops and will help for the isolation or the separation of the mixtures. So it's a separation technique, basically. So how exactly it works? You can see over here that separation is due to the differences in the distribution coefficients of the sample components. It means when you are having a mixture in the analyte, mixture of different different components of the analyte in the analyte, then that analyte is having an affinity towards the particular stationary phase. And different components have different affinity towards the stationary phase. So high affinity it will stay over there with the stationary phase and lowest affinity it will go first means it will come out first you can see over here you can see over here this is a stationary phase let us say and these are the mixture of analyte. We are having number of analytes actually in the particular mixture. Those components, when they are coming into contact with this particular stationary phase, depending upon its affinity towards the stationary phase, they will separate it out. These guys are having lowest affinity. So it, what happens actually? It will come out first. So the lowest affinity molecules, they'll come out first from the particular column. And these guys, they love this particular stationary phase. And as it loves, it passes more time with the stationary phase, actually. This is a common phenomenon. And that's the reason these guys, these molecules will stay with the stationary phase and they will come out last. And basis, based upon that, the particular separation is achieved. You can see over here, this is a chromatographic column. These are the samples being loaded. These are the stationary phase particles. Now, when a particular sample is having weaker interactions, those weak interaction forces, they allow these particular molecules to come out first. So here, you will get this particular sample first. And as these molecules are having the higher interaction with your stationary phase, it will come out last. So this, by this way, you can have a particular separation into the chromatographical column. <coughs> This is the basic principle of chromatography that the molecules of the mixture interact with the molecules of the mobile and the stationary phase and retardation of rate of movement of the particular molecules. 
each molecule interacts differently with the mobile phase and a stationary phase and that's the reason actually we are getting the separation so you can see over here that there are certain forces the uh, equilibrium and uh, certain forces are attracted over here actually it means sorption desorption stop sorption desorption is going to happen actually in a particular this is a stationary phase and these are the mobile phase mobile phase is running stationary phase is remaining stationary actually. and your sample mixture is going into so that particular sample mixture is taken by the particular mobile phase and that mobile phase will help the particular molecules simple molecule to come in contact with the stationary phase particle and due to that sorption and desorption is going to occur and we are going to get a particular separation of the mixture this process in the process compound is placed on a stationary phase mobile phase passes through the stationary phase molecules uh, and mobile phase uh, what mobile phase solubilizes the component it will carry the particular component along with it and those components when they are coming into contact with the stationary phase the other distribution is going so the mobile phase carries the individual components a certain distance through the stationary phase and depending upon their affinity towards the stationary phase it gets the separated out actually so that takes on the particular both phases the particular separation is going to achieve actually now why you need chromatography this is a very important question that why all these halabula is needed yes there are so many applications actually and based upon those applications uh, the we the questions answer will come actually that why the chromatography is needed so chromatography is a technique for separating mixtures into their components in order to analyze in order to analyze whether you are pregnant or not in order to identify which impurities are present in your drug molecule in order to purify whether your drug molecules are pure or not whether impurities are been separated or not and to quantify how much you are drunk how much you are drunk then what is the crp level in your body that how much protein is being the, this creative protein is being produced in your body by that way you will come to know how much you have been infected of the mixtures and components so chromatography is useful to analyze to identify to purify and or quantify the mixture of the component you can see over here that the mixture is there and those mixture they are being separated out with the help of the chromatography in different color to identify to analyze to purify and to quantify the particular sample so this is the reason why chromatography is needed there are plenty of applications the plethora of applications are open actually for you through the chromatography and the real life examples of the chromatography are in pharmaceutical company an amount of each chemical found in the new product i just told you actually in pharmaceutical company you will come to know that what is the particular uh, uh, what uh, components inside a particular sample means whether your particular drug is 100% pure or not which impurities are there and how much are those impurities that can be known with the help of the particular chromatography hospital detect blood or alcohol levels in a patient's blood stream very easy matter <clears throat> law enforcement you must be using uh, you must be looking or watching the cid in which they come with the to just check out actually okay take out some of the sample some of the strain sample actually blood strain and everything on a wall they'll come out with that and will come to know oh this particular guy was the dna analysis so they compare the sample found at crime scene to the sample from the suspects and will take whether the same suspect is involved in a crime or not environmental agency whether these particular samples are present in water or not easy to find out actually with the help of the chromatography manufacturing plant this is the most important i can say actually as far as the uh, business concern in a manufacturing plant the plant runs throughout the day your product is under preparation but when to stop your plant that needs the reaction monitoring if the reaction is going on in the plant you need to monitor it that how much reaction completed in that reaction completion you need to know that how much reactors are reacting and converting into the product and whether all the reactants are 
completely consumed all the product has been formed or any unwarranted product means any impurities are generated or not that can be done with the help of the chromatography means you can see that reaction monitoring can be done with the help of the chromatography and you will really really save so much of money actually with that so these are the uses of chromatography these are very small bunch of applications of the chromatography i can take there are number of applications in the chromatography even you can go to your home and you can um, uh, have a small experiment with your kids and they will really really love it actually what you can do go to your home and uh, go to nearby any of the tree two three four trees any tree take out some of the leaves from that and just crush those particular leaves after crushing the leaves take out the particular whatever the juice is coming out and that juice collect it in a glass then take chalk dust take chalk and crush it make it fine powders and please fill those powders in some glass tube so that you can see something when you fill that particular uh, glass let us say actually the uh, buret and you fill the chalk dust and if you pour the particular juice of the leaves inside it after some time what will happen you will see wonderful colors your whole chalk dust will be converted into the different kind of the color um, bands and your kid will literally love it you can say that oh see the chlorophyll was there actually inside the leaves there are so many things in the leaves actually those all components are being separated with the help of the chalk dust because chalk dust is working as a particular stationary phase and water by which you have diluted that particular uh, um, your juice is working as a particular mobile phase when you can uh, use the alcohol for the particular mobile phase uh, no, uh, uh, i'm not talking about ethanol you can take ipa uh, for that actually and just you can have a wonderful experiment at your home and you will, your kids will literally love this particular experiment so there are so many applications of the chromatography in real life there are basic terms which are involved in the chromatography mobile phase or the carrier phase in which the solvent moving through the column stationary phase are there which remains stationary into the column eluent fluid entering the column eluh fluid exist exiting the column or collected into the flask elution the process of washing out a compound through a column using a particular solvent analyte mixture those individual components have to be separated and analyzed these are the terms actually been used in a chromatographic column so let us see actually how the chromatography is working for you people i have make one simple uh, animation how chromatography work let us say that i have the three different analytes those three analytes are is these three color codings these are this is the thin layer chromatography i can say this is the plate on which the three dots the three samples are being placed sample number 1 sample number 2 sample number 3 now when this particular plate is being placed into a chromatographical column let us say a beaker and that beaker is filled with the particular mobile phase what mobile phase will do it will carry the sample this is the mobile phase let us see so this particular <coughs> mobile phase will carry the sample along with it you can see that what will happen after certain time all the molecules will go along with the mobile phase and based upon their affinity towards the stationary phase they will get separated so number 1 is coming over here number 1 will come here you can see that all the particular molecules are being separated so these are the three molecules got separated again we'll see okay you can see 1 2 3 so this guy is having the highest affinity so this red guy it will come out late this guy is having the highest is lowest affinity to come out first and this is having intermediate affinity so it will be remaining intermediate actually by this way you can separate out the particular mixture 
So this is the animation or chromatography. Now how you can how you can classify the particular chromatography. So chromatography can be classified according to the mobile phase in gas chromatography, liquid chromatography. Again, based upon the stationary phase used in the chromatography, gas chromatography can be uh, classified into gas liquid chromatography or the GLC, gas solid chromatography or the GSC. <coughs> and liquid chromatography is separated into liquid liquid chromatography liquid solid chromatography and based upon the affinity or based upon that uh, the, the uh, principle involved in separation they will be separated into partition chromatography adsorption chromatography molecular sieves chromatography again liquid liquid chromatography can be classified into partition chromatography and liquid solid chromatography can be classified in adsorption ion exchange and GPC chromatographical technique. So this is the classification of the particular chromatography. Now, which are the different types of the chromatography? There are different types like the liquid chromatography, gas chromatography, paper chromatography, and thin layer chromatography. Liquid chromatography separates liquid samples with a liquid solvent, which are used as a mobile phase, and a column, which is composed of solid bits, stationary bits. And gas chromatography separates vaporized samples with a carrier gas and a column composed of a liquid or solid bits, which are being known as the stationary phase particle. So, basic difference between the liquid chromatography and gas chromatography is the mobile phase. In gas uh, liquid chromatography, liquid mobile phase has been used. Whether in the gas chromatography, gas mobile phase is going to be used. It. Mobile phase as a gas or carrier gas has been used. In paper chromatography, it separates dried liquid samples with the liquid solvent, which are the mobile phase, and a paper strip, stationary. Generally, cellulose strip has been used actually, like same in the case of the uh, pregnancy test kit. And thin layer chromatography, it separates dried liquid samples with a liquid solvent, means the mobile phase is a liquid, and a glass plate, which has been covered with the thin aluminum <coughs> silica as a stationary phase part. So these are the different types of the particular chromatography. We have selected the first one, which has been known as the liquid chromatography. So these are the examples of the chromatography, liquid chromatography, thin layer chromatography, paper chromatography, and gas chromatography. All are very easy and uh, you can uh, use them in your laboratory, in your colleges. And generally you must be using the paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography. Even liquid chromatography can be used in the laboratory. These are very cheap and you can easily use yeah, gas chromatography is a little bit costly actually and you have to be very careful by using it. So the, let us see actually how this chromatography is going to work. Now, before starting the chromatographical uh, particular lecture actually um, towards the HPLC, we need to understand the theory of the chromatography. That why, uh, ideally what is uh, what should happen actually in, in uh, <coughs> experimentally and in real life what is happening actually so ideally there are two things uh, theory of the chromatography ideal chromatography and non-ideal chromatography ideal chromatography as all knows ideal what will happen what should happen that is happening that is ideal thing actually. so in ideal chromatography introduction of analyte in the form of the sharp plug you are entering the sample in a very sharp plug and it will come out with a very sharp you happy, me happy, all happy. So, and is happy actually. But it is not happening. It is not happening. What is happening? Sometimes some broadening of the peaks are occurring actually. And that has been called as the non ideal chromatography. In non ideal chromatography, components are added. When your analyte is added with the mobile phase into the column. When it is added into the column, it will pass through the column. But when it come out from the column, it will be into the form of the broad peak, not the sharp peak. It must come in the sharp peak, but it is not coming. So the components travel through the column. What is happening within this particular column actually? It decides that whether your sample will come out in a sharp way or in a broad. So components travel through the column, they go on separating at the same time, each component goes on broadening. This is not an ideal condition. Here, peaks goes on broadening and then over there. 
you can see over here in this particular figure that this is the ideal condition that both components are separated now when these both components are not separated what will happen you can see here that when they are not separated then such kind of the broad peak is coming in which the chances are there that this component has is having some amount into the next component and in this you can see literally overlap that component a and b are not separated well you will not come to know how much percentage of a is in your sample and how much percentage of b is there in your sample now the question arises why this is happening to understand this question of why we are going to learn the theory of the chromatography which are to be known as the plate theory or the rate theory sorry okay so we are going to see plate theory and rate theory before starting uh, plate theory we will see some of the terms which have been used like the distribution constant the transfer of analyte between the mobile and stationary phase the equilibrium constant k for this reaction is called the distribution constant where cs and cm are the concentration of the stationary phase and the mobile phase k is the constant retention time it is a time it takes after the sample injection for the analyte peak to reach the detector is called the retention time retention time to retain into the particular so the time it takes your analyte takes after sample injection for the analyte peak to reach the detector is called the retention time and it is given by the symbol r and tm is the unretained species if you have done the experiment earlier and all the particular mixture are not coming out and if you still do the next experiment without washing the column what will happen one more tiny peak will come to you, which is to be known as the ghost peak or the dead peak and then your main peak will come so distance between them tm and tr so the time tm for the unretained spaces to reach the detector is called the particular dead time peak resolution how much your peaks are being separated that is known as the resolution it must not overlap if it is overlapping then the results are really not good you can see over here in the first here 2.3 percentage overlap is there very small overlapping 0.15 percentage overlap a big overlap you can see <coughs> and here these are really good peaks actually means they have been separated column efficiency so to understand the plate theory non-ideal chromatography we need to understand the column efficiency <laughs> what does it mean by column efficiency so two related terms are widely used as quantitative measures of chromatographic column efficiency plate height h and plate count or number of theoretical plates the two are related by the equation n equals to l by h l is nothing but the length of the column divided by number of the theoretical plates so divided by the height so if you are dividing l by h the number of the theoretical plates will come whereas the length of the column packing the efficiency of chromatographic column is increased as the plate count n becomes greater the much you increase the number of n the much your particular efficiency is increasing in that way what you have to do your edge should be less so as the plate height edge becomes smaller then the efficiency will be good so we are going to see two theories which are the plate theory and the rate theory to understand the chromatography Plate theory is very older, which has been developed by the Martin and Seed in 1941, and rate theory is currently used, proposed by Damter in 1956, Gordon Nobel Prize. So, column is in the plate theory, column is divided into number of adjacent imaginary segments, which have been called as the theoretical plates. These are imaginary plates, not experimentally, they are available. 
the column is divided into imaginary plates which have been called as the theoretical plate the greater the number the good is the efficiency so greater separation occurs greater number of the theoretical plates as the plate height becomes smaller n equals to l by h and rate theory this is the important theory which have been used right now actually one damper it gives one equation for the plate height h equals to a plus b by mu plus cs plus cm into mu all these three terms have different meaning actually in h so let us see one by one what they mean a b and c so first term it derives with added diffusion what we are learning we are learning why the column broad why the your peak broadening is occurring so let us see the added diffusion the process that leads to peak broadening due to the presence of multiple flow paths through a packed column you are having a packed column and your sample is coming out you can see over here in this particular figure that your column is there and in this particular column this is the column this is the column in which the stationary phase particles are being placed and this is the uh, mixture component one two and three and you are adding a sample actually from here very sharp plug you are entering what is your uh, the purpose to separate out the particular to separate out the different molecules one two and three when they are coming into contact with the stationary phase particle due to the size of the stationary phase particle they will pass through the different paths and the molecule which needs the smallest part they will come out first so this guy is coming out this guy will come out first and then this guy will come and the guy which takes the longer part it will come out last so three number will come out first two number will come out intermediate and last one will come out because it needs the higher paths to come out and that's the reason actually you are going to get the broader peak this molecule one two and three are there same molecules are there but they are traveling different paths actually. that's the reason actually they will come out at different time interval and that's the reason you are getting the broad peak so at solid molecules travel through the columns some arise at the end sooner than others simply due to the different paths traveled around the support particles in the column that results in different travel distances so molecule at the column at same time but they exit at different time b non-equilibrium mass transfer a process of peak broadening caused by non-equilibrium attainment due to the transfer of solute from the higher concentration region to the lower concentration region when a molecule will come from the higher concentration to the lower concentration definitely the particular peak broadening is going to occur and the third and most important longitudinal diffusion band broadening due to the diffusion of the solute along the length of the column in the following mobile phase flowing the mobile phase you can see over here t1 t20 so degree of broad uh, band broadening due to longitudinal diff uh, diffusion depends on diffusion of the solute the flow rate of the solute to the particular column so a solid in the center in the this one this guy will come out first a solid in the center of the channel moves more quickly than the solute at the edges so it will tend to reach at the end of the channel first leading to the bond band broadening to understand this i have a small video for all of you let us see them Particle diffusion, added diffusion, and mass transfer in the system. Yes. This is your column. You can see that analyte is being injected. Let's see, they are traveling to a different part of the column. This guy coming first, this is coming second, and this is coming third. Same analyte, but they are traveling different paths, and that's the reason actually they are getting the point land broader. Longitudinal diffusion. As the analyte travels the column, diffusion occurs from concentrated center to the less concentrated region. You can see. Now it is separated. 
So these guys will come out first. Sorry. And third one, mass transfer in this system. It is and the light can pass around or through the system. It is. So let's see the mass is transferred. It has come from, from the sunlight side. It's by sunlight. We pull it. Okay, this guy is taking more time. And that's the reason it will come out late. Sorry. That's the reason we are getting the broadband. Now, which are the factors which increase the peak resolution? Peak resolution means separating of the peaks. First, increase the column length, edge will increase, efficiency will increase, peak resolution will increase. Decrease the column diameter. Decrease the flow rate. Generally, flow rate you have to adjust based upon your analyze. Peak column uniformly. Tag the particular column uniformly so that the diffusion will not occur and mass transfer is also not occurring. Use uniform stationary piece, the packing material. Decrease the sample size. Don't add much sample. Add small quantity of the sample and with quick one actually. Nowadays, computers can do that. Select proper stationary phase, select proper mobile phase. Use proper pressure, use gradient illusion. What is the meaning of the gradient illusion? We will come to know in later slides. So, these are the particular terms which have been used for the chromatography. Now, we are going to see the particular HPLC. For you, I have a couple of questions. What would you like to have? Would you like to have an ambassador car or a beautiful Ferrari? Or you need to have this or you can have this. Choice is yours. If I if you'll ask me, I'll choose both at the right. I will choose Ferrari. And I will choose the iPhone because technology, speed, performance, all these are there actually on the right hand side to me. iPhone, latest one. Ferrari uses latest technology and obviously speed thrills, but it kills. But still, people love it. So, when using the chromatography, liquid chromatography, you need what? You need a performance, you need the speed. So liquid chromatography can be carried out using a glass tube and packed with a stationary phase solid through which a solvent is allowed to gravity flow. As I just explained for your kids, that fill your column with the stationary phase, which are the chalk dust. And for the leaf juice, it will take time. At home, it is fine, but it will time consume. So why do we need all the complicated high-tech equipments? Just one word is needed, and that word is speed. You need the higher speed to understand that why we need the particular HPLC and not the liquid chromatography. The answer was really, really very simple actually. You need the performance and you need the speed. So a single analyzed analysis by classical liquid chromatography can take an anywhere from two to 12 hours to carry out HPLC. And that can, whether in uh, two to 12 hours, but in HPLC, that can be done just in 2 to 12 minutes. Now, UPLC is coming to be in which in a fraction of minutes you can do it. Reproducibility, you can have the reproducible results through the HPLC. So, what does it mean, HPLC? Whether it is a high performance liquid chromatography, whether it is a high pressure liquid chromatography, Howlet, Packard liquid chromatography, or high price liquid chromatography. I can say the three are right. It is a high performance. It is a high pressure liquid chromatography. It is definitely high priced chromatography, not held at the chromatography. So, which are the basic components of HPLC? 
obviously you need a solvent delivery system we need the injector to introduce the cell column sample a column guard column which contain a stationary phase detector which are the eyes to see waste collector and record along with this you need the particular in hplc as it is a high pressure chromatography you need the pump circuit <clears throat> so these are the basic components of the modern hplc and see that uh, we are having uh, the, uh, the solvents over here which are the mobile phase those particular solvents solvents are been placed over here those particular solvents <coughs> are filled into this particular uh, uh, bottles which are the reservoirs and they are pumped to the particular pump with the high pressure and those high pressure will be helpful actually to take that particular uh, mobile phase over here we are injecting the sample over the, from here so these are the auto sampler and they will uh, collect the sample and now your sample along with the mobile phase will go to the stationary phase over here which are the hplc column and in hplc column real wonder will happen so the magic start over here in the column where molecules get separated and that can be detected with the help of the detector from the fractional collector you will collect the sample and these guys the computer will give you the result I have a video to understand the functioning of the HPLC. Which are solvent reservoir, are the which solvent contains reservoir. different solvents, HPLC pump, degasser, which is attached with a vacuum pump, solvent mixing wall, pre column, which is also known as guard column, and the length of this column is 2 to 10 cm, and the internal diameter is 4 to 5 millimeter, usually 4.6 mm. Next part is sample injector, then analytical column. And the length of this analytical column is 10 to 30 centimeter. And again, internal diameter of this analytical column is 4 to 5 mm, usually 4.6 mm. These analytical columns and the pre columns are made up of stainless steel and filled with a stationary phase. And the commonly used stationary phase is ODS silica gel. And the common names of these columns are C18 columns. Next part is detector and finally coming to the recorder. Now coming to the working of this HPLC instrument. So first we will start the HPLC instrument. Then all parameters will be entered by the help of available HPLC software. And <laughs> these parameters are solvent ratio, flow rate, runtime, type of pollution, etc. After creating the method, solvent of the mobile phase will be pumped by the HPLC pump from the solvent reservoir towards the degasser. Now these solvents will come to the degasser and the degasser is attached with a vacuum pump which will create high vacuum. So any gas or air dissolved in the solvent will be removed online because this may create problem during elution. After degassing, solvents of the mobile phase will move towards the solvent mixing wall. In the solvent mixing wall, mixing of the solvents takes place which will help to produce uniform mobile phase. Now this mobile phase will run towards the pre-column or guard column. So this guard column will remove any kind of impurity present in the mobile phase and protects analytical column from the impurities. In next step, mobile phase will further move towards the analytical column, then detector. In this condition, blank mobile phase will be run for 10 minutes at least, which gives proper conditioning of the HPLC instrument. Now we will inject the required amount of sample through sample injector by the help of a micro syringe. So after injecting the sample, it will enter into the analytical column which contains stationary phase. <laughs> Due to the difference in the affinity with stationary phase, compounds present in the sample will be separated inside the column and the reaches to the detector and gives signals in the detector. Compounds having least affinity with stationary phase will reach to the detector first, which is indicated by green color. 
then moderate affinity compound will reach to the detector which is indicated by yellow color and finally highest affinity compound will reach to the detector at the end which is indicated by the orange color ultimately all signals will be appeared in the recorder for more details you so this was about the hplc working that how it functions there are different types in the hplc separation the partial list are normal phase chromatograph hplc reverse phase adsorption and chromatography size exclusion chromatography generally two are very important normal phase hplc and reverse phase hplc in normal phase separation of polar analytes by partitioning onto a polar bonded stationary phase is occurring whether in reverse phase chromatography separation of non polar analytes by partitioning onto a non polar bonded stationary phase will come in. we will go to little bit uh, quicker as uh, <clears throat> time is less let us see a simple science actually what is happening in the uh, normal and reverse phase chromatograph Just tell in normal phase chromatography, non polar solvents are used. So, mobile phase is non polar and stationary phase is polar or hydrophilic, and the separation is achieved by that. Mobile phase is non polar and stationary phase is polar or the hydrophilic. Whether in the case of the reversed phase, so it is happening in normal phase HPLC, the column is filled with silica particles which are polar. Silica is polar, the polar molecules bind adsorbed to the and the non-polar molecule will pass more quickly and through that the separation is achieved. Whether in the reverse phase SPLC, the mobile phase is polar and the stationary phase is non-polar or the hydrophobic. So when the polar mobile phase is coming in contact with the stationary phase particle, the polar will come out first and the non-polar will come out last. So based upon the polarity, it gets separated out. <coughs> and the silica C18 molecules are there actually, which are the hydrophobic. So whatever the silica particles are, they have been modified with the C18 to C8 to C18. It is written on the uh, column. So the non-polar molecules bind adsorb to the and the polar molecule will pass more quickly. And through so which the separation has been achieved. Reverse phase HPLC is the most commonly used HPLC. Because reverse phase is easier to use than normal phase. Reverse phase has a hydrophobic stationary phase, which can be applied to a wide range of molecules. It works well in retention time for most of the organic analytes. And reverse phase has the more options for the chromatographer. It also allows precise control. But when then the normal phase HPLC has been used? Generally, when the compounds are very hydrophobic at that time, you can use it actually. But they are not really suitable for the water actually. Generally, when you do the separation of the isomers, they are being used. So, then the second thing comes pumps. There are, what are the, how should be the pumps? There are ideal pumps should be, they have the ability to generate the high pressure because their work is there. They should give the pulse free output, accurate flow control of the flow and corrosion resistant. And their role is to deliver the mobile phase. So two groups of the pumps are there, constant volume and constant pressure. So three types of the pumps are available. Reciprocating pump in which 90% of the commercial HPLC pumps are reciprocating pump because they produce pulse flow. Displacement pumps, they produce flows that are independent of viscosity and back pressure. And pneumatic pumps, they cannot do gradient and pressure less than 2000 psi. These are the reciprocating pump in which you can have a particular motor and these are reciprocating piston. When the solvent will come out actually, then 
it, the ball check walls are there this ball check wall will open solvent will come over here this piston will come over here and it will give space and when the piston will move by force the particular mobile phase will go towards the column and by this way you will get the higher pressure sample injection system after the uh, pumps you need to inject the sample actually and the best idea to inject the sample is to the column actually. so how this valve system is the base to use the particular column you can see over here that this is the valve column actually the and sample injection system which i just show into your particular video actually that how the particular uh, samples be injected then comes out the particular columns analytical columns as shown into the video you can see over here actually that analytical columns how it should be that these are the fluids from which the entrance the sample is going to be injected sample and the mobile phase will come out from here so you are going to inject the sample along with the particular mobile phase over here these are the guard column which guards the particular molecules or this your particular stationary phase uh, particles into the column which is saves your column how it will remove the impurity from the mobile phase as well as the bigger impurity present in your particular sample component and these are the column where the magic happens the real separation happens actually and then this is the exit porous titanium fluid where from where the particular sample is coming out so general length are 10 to 30 cm internal diameter are 4 to 10 mm particle size is like 3 to 10 micrometer pore sizes are available 25 cm to 4.6 mm internal diameter with 5 micrometer particle size that is generally used in the analytical column actually optimization of separations in hplc you need correct choice of column so the above equilibrium has some meaningful equilibrium constant correct choice of mobile phase is needed decision on the type of the mobile phase composition constant composition means isocritic elution and if the composition of the mobile phase is changing with time in your experiment then that has been called as a gradient deviation if throughout the experiment your solvent composition remains the same then it has been called as the isocritic and when you are changing the particular mobile phase composition then it is called as the gradient deviation a determination of uh, flow rate should be constant this is on he uh, heating the particular column many samples are there which are to be heated then only it will get separated actually or better separation better resolution because so many times you have to heat the particular stationary phase particle to get the better uh, separation stationary phase part the phases generally polar non-polar as i just told packed particles in a column they require fluids this is we have already discussed how should be the mobile phase in hplc mobile these are the criteria to have the particular mobile phase the mobile phase should have they must solve it the analyte molecules and the solvent <coughs> they are in they uh, must be suitable for the analyte to transfer back and forth between during the separation process adsorption desorption adsorption desorption it should not like this that it will stuck up they must be compatible with the instrument it should not corrode them compatible with the stationary phase readily available of adequate purity if they are impure it will damage your column and thus analysis also not too compressible it they cause pump or the flow problems and free of gases which cause the complexity each no now i'll see the isocratic what is gas uh, gradient deviation as i just told you isocratic means throughout the experiment the composition of the mobile phase is not changing it will remain the same so in isocratic elution, constant mobile phase is used, can often uh, use one pump, mix solvents together ahead of the time, simpler, no mixing chamber is required, limited flexibility, not much use because you have to change the composition, then the analysis will be good in small time and with better separation. And so in gradient dilution, wearing of mobile phase composition, you are wearing, wearing the particular mobile phase composition based upon your requirement. Use often two to four pumps because you need to mix all these molecules actually, all the uh, mobile phase. Changing mobile phase components changes the polarity index. Column has to re equilibrate to original conditions after each run. It takes additional time. You can see over here this is the gradient illusion in which you initially 
the particular 30% acetonitrile has been run, then acetonitrile content is increased from the 30 to 45 percentage. So you can see over here that for the seven minutes, acetonitrile composition is 30 percent. But then we are changing the particular acetonitrile concentration from 30 to 45 percent. And at last, and from like you can see from 12 minutes to 27 minutes, you are running with 45 percentage of the acetonitrile. And then from the particular 30 minutes to the 40 minutes, you are running the 80 percent of the acetonitrile CACL. And that's the reason we are getting this particular separation. To understand this, let us have one more video for the isotretic illusion and gradient illusion. The isocritic method employs one mobile phase, one solvent. If two solvents are there, they are pre-mixed in a definite composition. And throughout that, uh, uncompoundly, you have a polar charge distribution. Throughout the experiment, same composition is done. I am compound rate and I have a non-polar charge distribution. So non-polar is your column. I love the stationary phase because it is non-polar. So it likes it. So it will stay longer time. I want to stay in the column forever if the mobile phase is very polar. And you can see the rate particle is coming very late. Blue come out first. So this is isocritic illusion. You can see the difference. These two are very, 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 very away. So it leaks longer time. One mobile phase, one solvent compounds blue left stationary phase very quickly. But if you mix them, a mixture of two mobile phases is also considered isocritic analysis as long as the composition stays the same. Let us see 90% of the polar and 10% of the non-polar are being used. But throughout the experiment, they are remaining the same. Then also, this particular experiment has been called as the isocritic illusion. Blue and red, both are having the compound blue. The mobile phase is now less polar. So now the resolution will be a little bit less. But still, bigger time. You can see, now the resolution is, runtime is a little bit better. <coughs> A gradient analysis in this situation can improve the particular runtime because you can change the composition. When you know that some of the particles are polar, then just pass the non-polar mobile phase. And when it comes for the non-polar, pass the polar mobile phase. The mobile phase is programmed to change its composition during the illusion. Polar and non-polar. When compound blue has left the stationary phase, program polarity of mobile phase to non-polarity. Means first 100% is removing. You can see over here that composition is changing. And due to that, two molecules will come closer. In very small time, both compound A and B can be separated. So this is a really good separation. And time is very fast. These are the isocratic analysis and gradient analysis. You can see the difference in isocratic when only one solvent was used. See the difference. Now comes the last part of the HPLC instrument, which are the detector. Detector, they visualize separated compounds and translate the concentration changes into the signals. The characteristic of an ideal detector is 
adequate sensitivity, good stability and reproducibility, gives linear response to analytes that have several ranges of magnitude. Shorter response time means it gives quick response. The moment the analyte enters it, it gives response. High reliability and ease of use, similarity in response towards all analyzed and they are non destructive. You can reuse your samples again by this. This would be. Basic types of detector, bulk property detector, the response to mobile phase bulk property like refractive index, dielectric constant and density. And another types are solid property detector, which, be, which responds to the solid property like the spectroscopy, UVIR, mass and fluorescence detector. Popular types of detector are UV visible detector, fluorescence detector, refractive index detector, and electrochemical detector. We'll see a couple of them. First, the UV visible absorption detector, in which, based upon the absorption of the analyte, it will give you the response. So, the compound with strong UV visible chromophores, they give response over here. If your sample is not having UV1, you have to do it and you will get it. So, compounds with conjugated or non conjugated double bonds. Aromatic molecules, when you are having, you can use the UV visible detector. Advantages simple, reliable, inexpensive, and compatible with the gradient illusion. And it is non destructive. Disadvantage is not as sensitive as fluorescence detector, non universal, only molecules with chromophores can use. But now uh, a solution is there. If your sample is not having chromophore, you can do it. You can derivatize and then you can use it. Samples like vitamins, carotenoids, <coughs> phytonutrients can be separated with the help of the UV visible detector. Diode array detector generally are being used. The more common tool for research grade HPLC instruments, white versatile, any kind of the samples can be detected by diode array detector. They are that. Non-destructive, non-universal, that scans a range of wavelengths every second or few seconds. At each point in the chromatogram, one will be having a complete UV spectrum. Diode array, a huge volume of data will be there. Detailed spectra for each peak and each region of each peak. Now computer programming can do it for you. Fluorescent detector, generally when a sample is having a fluorophore, you can use this fluorescent detector. Very accurate, very precise. So compounds with fluorophores by nature or by post column derivatization. Once they have been separated, then use the particular fluorophore and make them fluorescence active. Advantages, highly sensitive, low background, can solve co-illusion problem. Post column derivatization can be used for this detection. And disadvantages, perceived difficulty of its use. More instrumental variables to account for during optimization. Changes in fluorescence can occur with pH and viscosity. Generally samples like vitamins, vitamin C, drugs and other things can be used for the separation from the fluorescence detector. RI detector, compounds which do not have strong UV visible chromophore, fluorophores, electrochemical activity or ion conductivity can be separated with the help of the RI detector. They are non-destructive, they respond to analytes changing the RI, the refractive index of the particular mobile phase extremely temperature sensitive and usually heated. <clears throat> advantages universal in nature. All the samples can be analyzed. Disadvantages lack of sensitivity, impractical for gradient illusion and instability of the baseline. Organic acids, sugars, fungal metabolites kind of the samples can be used for the analysis in the refractive index detector. And after detecting the samples, you are having recording output to collect the data and that is nothing but your printer. So this is about a particular HP answer. Here our particular topic ends or the HPLC. You can see the chromatography in the chromatography, the high performance liquid chromatography or high pressure liquid chromatography is ending over here. I hope you have enjoyed the lecture. Whatever the questions, queries are there, you are open to discuss with me. You can ask me directly to my email address or through the Dr. Dilip Masawa coordinator or the president actually or anyone involved in this particular refresher course.
So if you want to be a part of our journey towards some excited science, you can ask me questions. So you and me, or you and we, can make a difference. I acknowledge our uh, funding agencies and I'm really thankful to the coordinators for giving me an opportunity. These are the references which I have used for the particular lecture preparation. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, thank you, the, Dr. Josi and uh, Dr. Dilip Asawa for giving me an opportunity, specifically the, Dr. Jagdish Josi. Uh, Director of uh, HRDC, uh, Gujarat University, and Dr. Dilip Pasawa, Department of Chemistry, Gujarat University, for giving me an opportunity to present this particular topic against you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. It was very nice and informative session for all. Thank you very much once again.